Hello there! Welcome back to Legends with Durka on the Series X. The annals of history often debate the most powerful warships that have sailed the seas. Yamato is always at the top of this list, or very close to it. The nerds of World of Warships have the same debate, and again Yamato is very close to the top of the list. In game, she has the best guns currently, and the ability to penetrate the Death Star if she wanted. Oh, and did I mention Yamato gun sound? So, is this still the best battleship in the game as of now? Let's find out. Yamato really needs no introductions, however there have been several changes to her since her launch. Through several iterations we have seen nerfs and buffs. The most recent of which was a nerf to her main gun accuracy of about 5%. Some argue that this completely neutered her and has, has made her, you know, half of what she once was but i really think this ship is still very competitive today i'll offer four reasons why yamato is still dominant at the tier as well as three unique builds for you to try as we talk about her but before we go any further let's look at our current commander setup i'm using the azerlane fuso commander she is essentially takage except her base trait increases fire chance of your he shells that is for main batteries and secondaries on my setup i'm choosing not to use flammable cannoneer to increase my lifespan in yamato and i'm also not using gyrating drill bits these are my preference. I would rather have the two extra knots of speed than the 1100 in shell damage, and I would rather not have an increased chance of catching fire of 13%. Um, I could see it either way, you want to play it. I just like my battleship to move a little bit faster and to survive a little bit longer. Cunningham and Scharnhorst are my inspirations, and they kind of help make up for not having flammable cannoneer. So, the first reason I think Yamato is still the best battleship at Legendary tier is her simplicity. It has a very low skill ceiling. So even a squid like myself, who hasn't played a battleship in, I don't know, two weeks maybe, can jump in her and turn out a 200k damage game on a whim. The simplicity of Yamato is really, it just doesn't take a lot of effort. You merely point and shoot and let the giant 460mm shells do the rest. With her long range main batteries, you can shell enemy ships with impunity from a distance. Another major advantage is something that I've talked a lot about on battleships and that is that the most of her firepower is right in the front of the ship so you don't necessarily need to do any fancy maneuvering. Players can simply position bow in and have two thirds of their firepower right on target. Simple, right? The other legendary battleships, GK, Conqueror, and Montana, often get their captains in trouble when they maneuver their large ships to try to get their back turrets to bear. This opens them up to catastrophic damage. I know because I've done it. Um, I definitely went through my learning phase, so, but Yamato, you jump right in it just like the Iowa, Alabama, Vladivostok, and you can use this bow in approach and it is so easy a caveman could do it. I will say with Yamato, if you know what you're doing and you position well, and you can even position with your stern towards the enemy, your rear fire angles are not bad at all, and you can successfully keep nine guns on target. Um, so yes, low skill ceiling, but I think there's a high skill cap as well, with correct positioning and angling like I just talked about. As well as, if played correctly, making flanking plays, you can utterly collapse red team and also tank an immense amount of damage. And that brings me to my second point, durability. I'll be the first to say I have blapped 40 or 50,000 K off of a Yamato who made a mistake, but played properly, Yamato is very, very tanky. For starters, 
Her turrets are ridiculously armored with 600 millimeters of plating on the front and 560 millimeter barbettes. Now that you think about it, have you ever knocked a Yamato's guns out of the fight? I'm not sure I have either. I, I thought about it for a while and it doesn't, you know, come to mind any time that I've ever taken a Yamato gun completely offline. Also, her torpedo protection is 55%. Um, this is twice as good as any other legendary battleship, which is, I guess, kind of ironic. Um, historically, her and Musashi had really poor protection in this department, but hey, this is a video game. Yamato's health pool is also quite large, and with Fuso's battle spirit perk, Billy Sims, and Hyde, you could have well over 105,000 health points. Pretty saucy. On top of this, she comes with two base heals that will give you back around 14,000 health points apiece. She has a 32mm bow, and this can only be overmatched by her own guns. On top of that, a 57mm deck that can thwart HE spam from small caliber sh cruiser shells. So Yamato is not a delicate flower at all, and I wouldn't call it a glass cannon. It's tanky. It's tough ship. She can genuinely be hard to root out unless her captain makes a mistake. Now there is one big downside to Yami's survivability, and that is her citadel, which can be seen from space. It's also raised very high above the waterline, so you're susceptible to being shot up pretty bad through the sides. Also, through the front of the cheeks between A and B turrets, as well as through the keister, so protect your six. The third point, firepower. Yamato has the largest caliber shells currently in the game. Eventually, more ridiculous paper ships will be added, yay, but for now, Yamato holds the crown. The shells have the highest AP alpha damage in game and can also overmatch 32 millimeters of armor, like we mentioned. Yamato's reload is also quite fast. I'm actually not sure why it is so fast. I have long said that it should be nerfed, and if it were up to me on this most recent nerf, would have left the accuracy alone and simply nerfed the reload. So, the second build. If you were so inclined, you could put Brawler and d Revel on Yamato and could have a 23 second reload. Stupid, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, HE shells are also no slouch on Yamato and could hit for 7300 damage apiece. With Azerlane Fuso, they have a 37% fire chance. Uh, with this in mind, destroyers do have to be careful around Yamato. Here in this game, I really wanted to show the Kabarosk just that, but alas, I was too impatient and I shot my load all over another Yamato. Uh, shooting AP shells 90% of the time, you're going to be fine. Uh, you won't be in trouble at all, even shooting destroyers, considering an overpin is 10% of the max AP shell damage. So you could still easily put a destroyer on life support with a good salvo of AP. The fourth point. This one may be not so obvious as the others, and that is stealth. In your third module slot, you have access to Concealment System Mod 1. This was added to Yamato as a buff. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe the spreadsheet said she wasn't performing well enough. But it is now one of the options for Nagato Amagi as well as Yamato. I don't have the Ashitaka, but I would assume it's there as well. Um, since it is a tier 6 ship, I believe. Yeah. Moving on, this concealment adds some unique playstyle for Yamato. Your concealment is two kilometers better than the Grosser Kerfurst, without really having to spec into it at all. Just simply put on the concealment module. With Swarsky and Kondo at their max levels, you could bring your concealment down to large cruiser level at around 12.8 kilometers. This leads to some interesting options. When getting into position, and more importantly, getting out of position, this is the biggest issue with most battleships, is players are just too aggressive 
and get themselves into a predicament that they can't get out of before they are burned down or just focused by the enemy team. So getting out of positions with your stealth. Also remembering your main battery range could easily be over 18 kilometers in Yamato. So this gives you a lot of room in between to simply drop spot if you are so inclined. And this has really been one of my favorite tactics with Yamato and the Conqueror um, with their reduced concealment. If you're taking too much damage, it's a little too hot and heavy, give your trigger finger a rest and simply Homer Simpson yourself back into the bushes. So a quick break from that to look at what the heck is going on in this game. And I will say that it comes down to ooh, the last 10 seconds as to whether or not we win or lose. It's definitely a little close for comfort. At this point, I was trying to do the math in my head to see if we could win on points or if we would have to hunt and kill the club bear. He tried to torp me in the butt, so I figured he was heading to sea to get that cap. Um, so my grand plan was to sail this big lug through B and into A. All the while hopefully keeping our Alaska alive. Speaking of Alaska, I think that he could have been a little more aggressive and probably moved into A cap. He wasn't going to get torped and the Turpets was going to get shot to pieces before he got there. But we really need to stop them from accruing points right now. Um... But regardless, the Turpets is about to get smacked. So you can see here, since this game was so close, having the two knots extra speed could have really been the difference between winning and losing this one. Had I been two knots slower this whole time, I might have caught those Club Air Torps in the rear, might not have got B cap or A cap as fast, and it literally would have meant the difference in winning or losing this game. Kind of interesting when you watch playbacks and think about things like that. But anyways, a special thanks to my teammates, the guy in the GK and the guy in the Alaska. They were great. They did a good job reading the map overall, understanding what needed to happen to win, and helping us clutch this one. You guys are the real OGs. Thanks. So to kind of recap what we have been talking about with the old Yamato. The three builds. Definitely give them a try. The first one, the survivability build using Hide and Sims and bringing that HP up over 105,000. I think that would, could be an interesting play for the Yamato. Uh, 15,000 more HP is quite a lot. Couple that with Hills and Will to Rebuild. And uh, yeah, I think it's pretty formidable. The rapid fire build, I would also be curious to see some people play that one. A 23 second reload does sound saucy, but that involves a lot of upgrading commanders for me that is difficult because I believe it's Kondo. He's such a low level for me that to have a good high brawler perk, it would take a lot of promotion orders and things that are difficult to come by. But if someone has a good Kondo, try the rapid fire build with D Ravel. And I'm curious how that goes. And then finally, the stealth build. I think it's a very um, competitive, competitive build, and you could do well with it. And that was using Swirsky and uh, Kondo, I believe, as inspirations to bring your concealment down another 10% to, I think it was 12.8 was maybe about where I would have had the concealment on Yamato, which is pretty awesome considering how big this boat really is. I think it could make for some interesting getting into position plays to maybe surprise enemies and also getting out of positions like we talked about. That's the biggest mistake most battleship captains make is pushing up too much and getting focused. So here, finally, at the end, I'm looking at the points and realize, okay, we're going to get this one won. Great job, guys. I'm really grateful. Even if we had lost this one, I, I probably would have been fine with it because it was competitive and fun. And the games that are like this are way more fun than a one-sided game on either side or the other. So this was awesome. Anyways, you guys... Let me know in the comments down below what you think of Yamato in her current state. Also, leave a like if you respect non-paper ships that actually existed and fought in real life. 
and do nothing at all if you're excited for fake ships like Shikishima and Kremlin from the land of make-believe. Have a great day, everyone. See ya!